Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi and I'd like to welcome you back to another exciting episode of our brand new series called Mount Sinai in Arabia. And by the way, folks, I mean, you know me that I love these kind of topics. For instance, we talked about Petra before, me and uh, uh, Dr. J. Smith. And uh, uh, we've talked uh, about a number of archaeological issues related to Islam. Me and Dr. J. will be doing more stuff concerning to the Islamic coins uh, to show also that sometimes history through these discoveries can tell us something. In, in this case, of course, we're talking about something that is really dear to all of us as believers, and that's Mount Sinai and this amazing encounter between God and Moses and God and his people. And of course, that's even setting the stage for what is to come. You know, you have the Passover and representation of our Lord, the real Passover, Lamb, and uh, many other things, of course. So, uh, Joel basically is laying out uh, a groundbreaking, uh, you know, foundation for us here uh, by way of him doing the research visiting uh, the site of what appears to be the real location of the real Mount Sinai. For the last couple of episodes, if you have watched those, of course, you would have noticed that we've been talking about a number of evidence that after a while, when you put these evidence together, it's hard really to sell it as a coincidence because you can settle for one of those as a coincidence, but when you have a number of them in the same vicinity or in the same location supported by biblical passages with vivid description at times, it's really hard to argue against that. Today, of course, and today's show will be no exception to that because we are still exploring the additional evidence to support the notion that this is the location of what we believe is the real Mount Sinai. Um, Joel, thank you, brother. As okay. always, amazing work. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you for the amazing research. And thank you also for uh, really taking the time to go there before we, uh, we have done this so that you're not talking out of uh, secondhand research. You're talking from experience and witnessing things and supporting that with images. So what are we going to cover today? So we're going to jump into um, one of the most sublime portions of Scripture, one of the most sublime events um, in all of Scripture. And we're going to talk about the plateau that's on the top of the mountain. That'll make sense in a minute. But I want to start with the meal that the Bible says Moses and Aaron and some of the elders of Israel uh, ate on top of the mountain. Because when we read this biblical account, it reveals to us the layout or the, the manner in which the mountain is formed. Okay, and we'll, uh, that'll make some sense in a minute. So in Exodus 24, verses 1 and 2, the Lord said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders, of Israel, 70 elders of Israel, and you are to worship at a distance. So all of you are to worship at a distance. But Moses alone is to approach the Lord. The others must not come near. Right. So they go to the top of the mountain, but Moses goes all the way to the top. Exactly. And so what scholars have observed who've never been to this mountain and you know they've discussed the fact that the mountain seems to be set up in a two-tiered formation. And they've likened it actually, we were talking about this in the last episode, they've likened this to the temple where you have the holy place and then you have the holy of holies. Now, only the high priest will enter that. Exactly. And so Moses, of course, being essentially the high priest, he goes all the way up to the Lord. All of the others, the 70 representative elders of Israel, they go up to the top, but not all the way to the top. So it's as though there are two peaks, if you will. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a very sp special significance to what they did. So after the covenant was made, after this betrothal ceremony, this wedding ceremony, mm -hmm. um, in the West, and I assume it's the same in Saudi Arabia, after a wedding, what does everyone do? Oh, party, man. Eat, feast. They, they have a wedding feast, yeah. right? They have the, the, the marriage dinner. And so in verses 9 through 11, Exodus 24, it says, Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the 70, of, 70 elders of Israel went up. Now get this. This is when I, this is amazing. They saw the God of Israel. It's an amazing scene, brother. It's an amazing scene. They go up, and it's as though even Scripture doesn't quite have the language to communicate what happened because it was just, it says, under his feet was something like a yeah. pavement of lapis lazuli mm -hmm. or cobalt blue, 
as bright blue as the sky. Some translations say translucent blue like the sky. But God, and here's the miracle, but God did not, he didn't kill them. They saw God, but he did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. And then it says this, this statement, I want to put this verse, you know, on my desk. They saw God and they ate and drank. So this is in contrast, which we'll see later, with the idolaters. It says mm-hmm. they ate and drank and they rose up to play. Yeah. And what did the Lord say in uh, Revelation 3 to, uh, 20? Here I am, you know, I knock on your door. If you open, you know, I will come and do what? Eat. Eat with you. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I love that because, yeah. and let me say this as kind of a bunny trail, but so much of the church today, we were essentially taught that someday, you know, Jesus died on the cross for us so that someday we die and go to heaven forever. And of course, that's true. We don't go to hell. And if we're to die today, our spirits would be with him. But even those that are in heaven are awaiting the day of the Lord, the resurrection of the body. We will be clothed with immortality. And you know what happens when we have bodies? We eat. That's right. There's substance to it. Jesus came back after the resurrection. He mm-hmm. ate fish. Yeah. And the scriptures talk about all of these things. And the and wedding f- feast of the Lamb, you know? Exactly. Yeah. This is the thing is, yeah. is uh, in Isaiah 25, it says, on this mountain, I will throw a lavish feast for all peoples. By the way, it's not just for the Jews. It's for all peoples. And it says a choice feast of aged wine, sorry, Baptists, and choice marrow, sorry, vegans. So you've got substance to it. There's wine, there's meat, and that resonates with us. I always like to point this out because we like to eat because God made us to enjoy food and substance and these type of things. And that's the nature of our inheritance in in the Messiah. We will be clothed with immortality. So good stuff. Okay, so back to this. Again, reading the scriptures to try to understand the layout of the mountain. Now, Moses has been up there. The golden calf incident happens. But then in Exodus 32, it, it says this. Now, when Joshua heard the sound of the people as they shouted, they're worshiping the golden calf. He said to Moses, there is a sound of war in the camp. So they can hear the sound. Uh, But he said, it's not the sound of the cry of triumph, nor is it the sound of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing. Okay, so Joshua had been waiting up there, again, halfway up the mountain, wherever it was that they ate. Moses is all the way up. Joshua is waiting for him. Moses comes down. And they can hear the idolaters, but they cannot see them. So there's a reason they can't see them. Now, let's look at some pictures of Jebel Alos. Again, here's a close-up of the cave of Elijah. Now, the first time I went, we got to the cave. That's as far as we got because we made some mistakes in terms of it was a very long, long hike. Now, stepping back from the mountain, you can see that once you get up to the cave of Elijah, you're already way, way up there. But in order to get over to that peak, you have to get over this first ridge. Exactly. So the last time we were there, we went around the ridge. Now from Elijah's cave, which is close to the top, up near the darkened area on the right, to get around that ridge, it's another hour and a half or so, two hours to get up there. And when we got up there, I saw something amazing. Here's a picture of what you see once you go over the initial ridge. There's a plateau up there. Wow. I mean, so that would have been the first layer. This is where clearly where the The elders, yeah. and uh, Where they ate and they looked up and it's the size of a football field. And it's surrounded by this this ridge. It's a bowl, essentially. Um, And the ridge is probably 30, 40 feet all the way around. So it explains why they could hear them. But because they're echo, but you cannot see them. But they couldn't see them. And then here's another picture as you get closer to the, the upper peak, standing at the base of that. That's the part that Moses went all the way up. Right. The elders and everyone ate down below. They looked up. They saw the feet. They saw the God of Israel as they looked up to him at like this, this pavement of lapis lazuli. And that, by the way, is another couple hours to get up. So it's a, it's a beast of a mountain. And that's still quite a ways up. And let me just say this. I don't have the pictures here. But at the very, very top, there is an altar. So, mm. uh, you know, Bedouins are pretty tough cookies, you know, they're they're shepherding their sheep, but I don't think they like to just hike to the top of a mountain for no reason. 
So it's hard to know who built that altar, but someone and built then, an you altar. Know, knowing the, uh, the Bedouins of my land, they're not going to build an altar over there. Uh, right. To them, you know how they think about these things. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is their backyard. They're, they, yeah. For us, it's exciting. Now, here's a picture. So when we got up, we actually camped at the top. And here's a picture from that night. Um, wow, that's amazing. That my friend took on his Fuji camera. He's a, he's a great photographer. Long exposure, beautiful. Look at the stars. It was the Milky Way was right above us. And I'll just say this, too. We didn't plan this. It was completely unplanned. This was 2019. It was the last night of tabernacles of Sukkot wow. which is the biblical feast where you're supposed to camp outside and you're supposed to build a sukkah uh, a hut or tabernacle that you can look through and see the stars to remind us that we are strangers here we don't this is not really our home we're looking forward to the coming kingdom and so and, and we that's camped. how God took Abraham out to show him to show him the stars yeah. count the stars if you can yeah. it was magnificent and shooting stars and I mean it was I don't want to use the word magical but it was it was absolutely it, it does look if you would have showed me this picture and said this is from Saudi I probably would have doubted you know yeah I want to get this blown up uh, into a poster yeah. but so you know once again the just the structure of the mountain aligns with the biblical narrative in a profound way so whether it be the archaeological sites, the altar, the structure of the mountain, everything just falls into place. Amen. Well, brother, this is amazing. I mean, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the basically the, the mountain of evidence, no pun intended here, is rising already. And uh, I'm hoping that the people who are watching this, at least they'll take the time to investigate it, explore it, maybe even end up going to Saudi, maybe even sign up to one of the trips that Joel uh, hopefully will be putting together soon due to COVID, uh, they have to cancel, of course, uh, the planned trip this year at least, but hopefully by next year in 2021 or 2022, you'll be able to do so. So brother, what are we to expect next time? So next we're gonna begin looking at petroglyphs and paintings, some very specific petroglyphs and paintings, which just like everything that we've looked at before is really profound and again, validates this as the real Mount Sinai. Wonderful, looking forward to it as always. Thank you, and uh, everyone, please uh, be sure to check uh, Joel's website, joelstrumpet.com. Also, subscri subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sira International, and uh, consider to become a Patreon patron. Uh, for you, brother, what is your YouTube channel? You know, I'm not, the I'm not sure what the name of it is. It's just called The Underground with Joel Richardson. So if you type in Joel Richardson or The Underground, my channel will pop up. And is there a way for them to support your effort also? Um, the best way to do that is to go to my website, joelstrumpet.com, and just click on Partner. Very good. Please consider to do so. Our brother is doing an amazing, amazing work here, and it's groundbreaking, no pun intended also. And uh, we like to support those kind of efforts, of course. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us, and thank you for watching this. Make sure you spread the word, share it with others. Until we meet again next time, have a blessed day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. We can't make these quality videos without the help of partners like you. So please consider becoming a Patreon supporter today at patreon.com forward slash Sierra International. I want to make sure you always get notified when we release a new video. So please click the bell to be notified. And of course, make sure to subscribe to this channel. If this video was helpful to you, please click the thumbs up. Thank you.